per day. Honestly, when we review, we review this situation, even with the former service chiefs, since then, their daily allowance was increased to 2,000, and they're working on that. And as I said, all these things don't come cheap. If you take your, uh, your answer there and do the calculation, we have about 35,000 troops at the theater who are engaged in what they call an Operation Lafayette Dolly. Multiply 2,000 Naira, assuming all of them are troops or other ranks. You multiply 2,000 times 35,000, I think you are getting about 70 million just for one day. If you multiply that for one week times seven, you know the number. If you multiply that per month, you, the money runs into billions. And when they see the figure, people will start complaining that too much money has been spent on the army. I don't think that there is no amount that will equate to somebody that sacrifices his life. One bullet will bring the, a, a, a troop down if he, has, he doesn't have a helmet or he doesn't have a bulletproof. And the bulletproof don't come cheap, cheap. So the welfare of the troops is being improved upon, honestly. And their payment is being done timely. But the frustration they are facing there again is that the military of uh, the Ministry of Finance doesn't give them the money on time. You can imagine we that oversight them sometimes have to go to the ministry and lobby for them to release the, make the releases on time. And, and, and we, can't, we, can't, we can't, it can't work uh, that way. But let me say here that we have access. I, I have access to the president, I have access to the minister and we follow up this thing. And there is actually improvement and there is supposed to be more improvement. And Madam, on your question on impeachment, well, let me say that President Buhari is a Nigerian. He's the president, quite okay, the head of the government. But it is not the head only that controls the body. If you change the head and the body is still bad, the problem we have in this country is not about that one leadership. Government is supposed to be government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Now, you, madam, you are even saying that this is the government of Buhari for Buhari and by Buhari. So, you see, even if you bring another person, before he even do, do the right thing, I'm not saying that what we are facing today is, is good enough. I've several times challenged the president on some of these issues. But, as I said before, and I still say it now, that it is not enough to have the head of the house as a good person and the members of the family are criminals. What we have in this country, I can vouch for the integrity of President Mohammed Buhari, but then that is not enough. Maybe you have heard me several times that the problem we have is that we have so many kleptocrats in the government. They care about themselves only, and they don't care about what is happening to majority of the citizens. Unless you are going to do a holistic change in this system of this country. If you remove Buhari and bring Ndume tomorrow, you don't expect magic. When his lieutenants are still the same bunch of people that will come and tell him lies, that will come and acquire, that continue to, in, to enrich themselves, that will only continue to protect themselves. They don't even relate with the electorates. They don't even relate with the people. And then you have a government now where saying or speaking the truth is false, is wrong. I disagree with my own children, and we argue. And normally I give up if their argument is superior to mine. But here we are in a system where the country, people don't speak out, or even if they do, they do it based on sentiment. I don't believe that removing President Buhari is the, the solution. But I believe 
that Buhari should be made to do what he's supposed to do. We have the National Assembly there, we have the ministries there, the institutions of government are not working. All of them are looking up to Buhari, and Buhari alone cannot do anything, and that is why we are facing this problem that we have. When you say it is Buhari, Buhari is only the president. You can bring Dume, you can bring uh, 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 Madame, you can come in as uh, Madame. Nothing will happen if you have criminals around there. So that is my answer to that. I don't think that removing the president is the solution, but making the president to do what is right is the solution. Then uh, the guy from Vanguard asked a question about the amnesty. My position is known except if you are not following me. Starting from this program of the radicalization and self corridor of the Nigerian army. Totally against it, that one. In fact, I contemplated going to court to stop them. Totally against that. You can't have people perpetuating criminality and you say you come in and you have a hands up. Then, I, maybe many of you will start thinking, considering being a bandit, then you come and sit down with, on a negotiating table with the government. And you say, give me 500 million, then I will drop my arms and I will stop uh, kidnapping. That is not the right way to go. Gumi has made some effort. There are some cases whereby there is a need to talk to those that are caught in this. Caught, uh, I repeat that word. I give you an example. The problem of banditry in the north it started with cattle rustling. The cattle rustlers are armed robbers that go to, 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 to forest to rob the Fulanis or the headsmen of their cattle using AK-47 and the various arms they have. Then the Fulani people thought, ah, these people that come to terrorize us here, the only difference between we and them is that they have AK-47. And when you sell one of your cows, you can buy one AK-47. So they will sell their cows out of the hundred, sell two or three, buy AK-47, invite a policeman and give him one goat, and he will train them how to use the, the gun, and then they hang it on themselves. Waiting, if the castle wrestler comes in, they exchange fire. That was how it started. Then they discovered that if you kidnap somebody and take him into the bush, make the call, you will get 10 million. You share it with the people, the network. And all you see, where you know that it's a big network, as one of you said, is that when they are arrested, they ask them how much did they get. They collect a ransom of 10 million, but the person arrested has only received 200,000. Where is the rest? Who is responsible? Why did you get the gun? Who, you know, why, how did you collect the money? And after that parade by the police, that's the end of it. You hear no case, no going to court, no conviction, nothing. How can you stop that? The same thing with the issue of this corruption that we are facing in this country. Somebody will steal 10 billion and they keep going to court to... And then, uh, 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 you, you know, you, you get somebody uh, like the, the way I became victim of mine last time. You will bail the person and then the person will start no, running normal life. In fact, if he comes to an occasion like this, he will be taken to the high table because he has his stolen, his stolen money with him. And that's the end of the story. So, uh, this, this, this issue of, uh, of, uh, of amnesty is something that I'm opposed to. Gumi is talking to some people. Yes, you can't say there is no corridor to provide exit from some people that want to uh, repent or they want to give up that uh, uh, form of criminality. But that does not mean that you, 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 you give them amnesty and set them free. No, they should come in, confess, face the law. If they are to be jailed, let them serve the jail term. If they sell a, they serve a certain jail term, they are being monitored at the correctional center. And the, if the authorities want to pardon them, that is a different thing. And it cannot be done blindly like that. It has to be with uh, the people. And that takes me back to the issue of the Boko Haram. In my own village, I said this several times and I want to repeat it here again. When Boko Haram took over my local government, Goza to be specific, and declared it as their caliphate, most of our elders could not run. So they sacrificed, they said, I said, let us stay. 
and they continue reading the Quran. These are Malams, 75 of them. Somebody went and told the Boko Haram people that uh, these people are praying against you. They took these 75 people to an abattoir and slaughtered them. 75. We know them. Then you say they went to Gombe to uh, raise up their hand and say they have surrendered. Then you train them and you give them a start of what they call the start of work and bring them to my village. I told them there and then that if you allow these people to come to my village, we'll go and kill them and then go to Gombe and surrender. So that you can train us and also give us a start of work. And you see, these are the things that the government is done confusingly because they are looking for a solution here and there. And they are not talking to the people. Nobody is talking to us. Nobody is taking our input. The solution to this insurgency will start with the people, not with the army. Because you are not fighting a conventional war. And the moment you don't make the environment conducive for the people to feel relaxed and give you advice or even fight along with you. We have our people now, the civilian JTF, the hunters, the vigilantes. They are ready to work, they are ready to fight work side by side with the Nigerian army. But they are saying, no, this is not their job. It's a confusing situation. Then, the issue of the schools. The bandits now find schools very convenient. Except if you go to church or you go to mosque, you can't get a, a gathering of people that you can just kidnap in, in droves. So they find schools with a single gate and then they sleep in one place. They go at night, shoot a uh, few shots into the air. Everybody will be scared because they know the police will not be there. So they have to comply with the directives of the bandits. They pack them in one side. And one thing about the government again, the government will be rushing to negotiate with them. The people that are in government will be, you know, excited about it. Uh, it's a security vote, so you don't disclose. So they say 500. And the bandits, as you see, when they arrest some of them, they end up with, with maybe 10% of that money. And so, somewhere in between, people are enriching themselves. We are out of this uh, unfortunate situation. There, is, there was a project, very viable one, that um, the British government, UK, called the Safe School Initiative. When the Chibo girls were abducted, it was initiated by this uh, former Prime Minister of UK. What is his name? Cameron. Eh? Cameron. Yes. The Nigerian government were not interested and are so serious. The developed countries were willing to assist us. What do you need? We have the Peace Corps there that are willing to volunteer. We are not using them. We have the vigilante there to make the school safe. We are not using it. So in this country, anything that you bring that will not lead to some people having access to filling their pocket, they will not be interested even if it will help or it will be useful to the side right? So that's the problem. I hope I've answered your question too. And I think we have had enough. Yes, 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 yes. The last one. The last one. Yes. Eh? No, for the day. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Somebody from the Southeast, I'm sure I was keen about knowing my position. There are two. I'm not the party. But I'm of APC, you know. And maybe you have had my opinion. And I still stick to that. I'm one of the founders of APC when we came together to form the APC. Then, in principles, we agreed that the North should produce the president. That was why Buhari, Konkoso, Atiku, and uh, Samunda contested. Rogers insisted that he must exercise his constitutional right. And of course, the Nigerian constitution is superior to APC constitution and those he was allowed, even though he knew that he was not going to win. So that was why he was holding his gubernatorial ticket he, he, he gave it in custody to his in-law. When he was defeated, he went and collected it. I, uh, so 
Senator Alin Dume is against APC producing its presidential candidate from the North. The APC presidency or presidential candidate should come from the South. I said it and I will still say it again that to me, if you have a Northerner as the presidential candidate from APC, I'm not talking about PDP, to me it's that term to that term and it's not constitutional. The constitution says the president will serve two terms and we say the North should serve two terms. So if you say the North should produce the president again, it means you are going for that term, which is not fair. And I believe in fairness, justice, and equity. Let candidates from the South, and that means South South, South East, and uh, Southwest. Southwest. As for the South East issue, and even the South generally, let me say it here, that you can't say, for example, you want to be the head of this house, and you are calling for the division of the house. Will it work? I think the South needs to do so, think about it. That is what is giving the room for these Northerners to even say, okay, who want to be the president again? Because if you want to be the president of Nigeria, then you must believe in the unity of Nigeria. If you say Nigeria should be divided, and which Nigeria are you going to be president of? So for me, I support a candidate from the South, anywhere from the South. Southeast, Southwest, South, South. These are the three slots. So to me, if I am to be given the chance even, I will say, South, South, bring your candidate, one or two. Uh, Southeast, bring your candidate, one or two. Uh, South, uh, Southeast, bring your candidate, one or two. Let's go to the convention and ask Nigerians, I mean, the APC people to vote for whoever you want. Whoever turns out from the South, we give him the support and hopefully uh, we we'll win the election. As I said, I'm speaking for APC, not uh, PDP. Thank you very much. I hope I've